Welcome to our NFM Salute for the month of April 2021. I'm your host, Greg Scher. We're delighted to welcome in Army veteran Marion Labitte, who joins us from Jacksonville, Florida, an eight-year veteran of the Army, and she has quite a story to tell. Marion, thank you for being with us on NFM TV, and thank you so much for your service. Greg, thank you for having me. I understand that you made the determination at a very young age to serve your country. Tell us about that. So I grew up watching my brother-in-law serve in the Navy, and he still serves today, has almost 30 years in service. And it was such a pride to see him, you know, serving the country, just proud of what, what he was fighting for and what he believed in. And I wanted to be a part of something greater, something bigger than me. And you went right out of high school? I did. Do you remember the first time you stepped into an office and spoke to somebody about serving your country at such a young age? They actually didn't take me seriously. I didn't think I looked like what the typical person would look like wanting to join the Army, but I had my mind made up about it. Um, the process actually went pretty smoothly. I was gone within a few months. And so you were deployed in 2012. Tell us what you were deployed as and what you did there. I deployed as a truck driver in the campaign Operation Enduring Freedom. So in the capacity of truck driver during wartime in a combat zone, what are some of the duties that you had to do? We were transporting goods throughout the country, whatever uh, soldiers were needing um, at different campsites, water, food, supplies, we brought it to them. So take us back to 2012. How, how hostile of a combat zone was it? Upon arrival, uh, we were attacked the first night. So jumping up out of bed to hearing rockets flying, scary, wondering if I'm going to make it back home to family. You left behind two young children, Cameron and Kennedy, and I know that weighed heavily on you even before those rockets were sent overhead. Um, the choice to leave your children behind, how difficult was that? Very difficult as they were too young to understand why mommy wasn't home. Cameron suffered a lot during that time. He just didn't understand and all he ever would say was, mommy, you left me. So I'm curious to know as a woman in the military what that experience was and did that create any unique challenges for you? It most definitely did create a lot of challenges. Being a woman in the military, you have to work twice as hard. To, to be seen. So I always felt like I had to be in top fit shape. I had to know my regulation in and out. I always had to set a higher standard for myself and operate at that highest standard in order to be taken seriously. So tell us about your return back to the United States. Where did you go and when did you get out of the military? That was a very, very difficult time trying to cope with the things that I've seen during the tour, um, still reaching for my weapon when it wasn't there, when I didn't need to, to do that anymore. You know, nightmares. Definitely uh, went through some counseling to cope with those things. Uh, immediately after getting back, it was time for me to reenlist, which I did extend my, my time, and I was headed out to Fort Shafter, Hawaii. And you spent some time there where you ended up meeting another soldier who you later married. I met uh, Carl while in Hawaii, and he served as a culinary specialist at Schofield Barracks, where he had been in Carl served for nine years, and it was fireworks from the start. <laughs> well, I want to fast forward uh, to your story and to Code of Vets, which is the nonprofit organization that you have chosen uh, our $2,500 donation to go towards. I know that they showed up for you in a very big way. This organization has really impressed me so much, led by Gretchen Smith, who's a former veteran herself. Uh, she and her organization donated $2.7 million to veterans in crisis, and you were one of those veterans. Yeah, so when the pandemic started, I was doing very well in my business, Angel Hair Company, which uh, I provide cranial prosthesis for uh, patients that has underlying medical conditions that result in hair loss. 
people couldn't afford to to do those things at that time. So it, it hit an all time low. Carl and I relied on on savings. Really, really needed help, and they were a lifesaver. They uh, did give me eighteen hundred dollars to catch up on some bills and try to get ahead. Carl and I decided to um, take a little bit of that and pay it forward, donating one of the wigs from the company to a vet in need who's who's suffering. And for those of you that want to follow Code of Vets, I recommend you go to Code of Vets. Dot com and see some of the great work that they do. Um, this is an up and coming organization. They are fully transparent. They've got all their financials up on their website for everyone to see. Only 2% of the donations go towards operating costs. 98% of the funds donated to this organization go to veterans in need. And there are so many of them out there. And I want to tell you, uh, even though we're donating $2,500 to Code of Vets, I'm going to make a personal gesture to you right now from me and uh, my family to yours. Um, I'm hitting the send button on a PayPal contribution from me to you for $1,000. Wow. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Army veteran Marion Labitte, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and sharing your story with us here on NFM TV. Thank you, Greg. That's our April NFM salute. I'm Greg Scher. We'll talk to you next time.